Right. Uh, right. I believe I've talked about. So we use OpenStack for managing our commercial uh, virtualization platforms, along with uh, the storage plans. You know, including both centralized and distributed storage, and um, also the commercial SDN and NFA solutions. So on top of that, we also have our full stack of uh, of virtualization solutions and developed on top of the open source products, including the KVM for uh, virtualization, safe for storage, and uh, OpenStack Neutron, and uh, OpenWSwitch for SDN. So basically, the OpenStack is used for managing our legacy IT resource pools and the ongoing building city cloud network resource pools. And for container resources, we have uh, also integrated the Kubernetes in our adaptation layer, and we are planning of adding the project of Prometheus into our adaptation layer for monitoring purposes as well. So this is our deployment architecture. So we call this a three-layer deployment architecture. So first, on the left-hand side, we have the uh, central portal uh, deployed in Beijing. So it contains the central portal for uh, unified management uh, through all China Telecom's resource pools across the country with the direct management of resource pools located in Beijing. The second layer is the regional or provincial layer. So it is deployed in the provincial capital cities, providing the unified management for uh, the local DCs through, um, through the OpenStack adaptation layer. And uh, we have the provincial portal and the central portal. They are linked together using the API gateway so that you know the operators in, in Beijing in the China Telecom Group's knock center, they, they know they can they have a grip of like um, what's the usage are like, and uh, they have also they have the ability of uh, managing the lifecycle management of of the, of the instances um, running on the running on resource pools across the country. So the third layer is the city level DCs plus uh, the edge nodes. So in order to in order to manage those resources, the CMP has an additional aggregation layer, which we can see just on the right there, I believe. And so this, uh, so this is just to enhance the ability of the unified management at the provincial capital level. So the CMP reply, relies on the dual adaptation layer model and uh, interconnected VIM gateways to achieve what we call the unified management over, all over, all, uh, over the resource pools all over the country. So this is uh, very important in the telco business applications. And also, those, uh, the WIM gateway provides the APIs to external systems, for example, the OA system or workflow system, OSS, BSS, those are traditional telco business systems, and uh, the VNFM and NFVO for managing the VNF. So this is the current state of our China Telecom CMP system, and uh, the numbers have been blurred out you know, for privacy reasons. Uh, except the one on the top left corner, which is uh, the number of the uh, resource pools overall re resource pools across the country. So our our um, CMP manages more than 300 resource pools over 50 plus cities, and you can also see the overall resource usage rate and with the top five rankings of the index, such as CPU allocation percentage, uh, along with RAM and storage usage allocation percentage on the Right uh, on the right there, and uh, you can also see the uh, some of the virtualization vendors' proportions uh, in the pie chart on the left hand side there. So, in general, our CMP provides heterogeneous resource management, the decentralized distribution, and the unified management of various ICT resource pools, including both IT and, and CT cloud. Okay, so next up is our the CMP usage in IT and CT scenarios. So for IT clouds, we have a hierarchical deployment in central and provincial DCs and carrying four plus 31 plus X uh, IT cloud resource pools in total and realizing the unified management of all those uh, different IT systems and service platforms across the country. So just a brief um, you know, breakdown of the numbers. So the number four stands for the four national level or central level, 
DCs, which are located in Neimong, Guizhou, Beijing, and Shanghai. And uh, in, those, in, in this level, we have achieved the unified IT system and the unified business platform. So the number 31 here, it uh, stands for the 31 different provinces and uh, you know, the, um, which, are labeled, uh, which are labeled in color purple on the, on the map to the right. So the IT and the government pl uh, our IT systems and the external systems, for example, the ICT or government cloud and industrial clouds are being uh, managed through this layer. And last but not least, the number X. So why X is because the, the, the process of building our edge nodes is still an ongoing process and we don't know exactly how many uh, end nodes are gonna be connected to our system yet. So we just use X there. But anyway, it's that's for the city level nodes and edge nodes. So in this situation, the CMP will manage both the local government and the industrial clouds. So here we have more snapshots from our, you know, the IT cloud systems from the CMP. So we manage more than 10,000 uh, nodes for the private clouds, including our very own, the CT business cloud, the Zhufeng insurance private cloud, and uh, the very glamorous, the Beijing second airport cloud, and uh, the civil aviation clearing center cloud. So for industry clouds, we manage more than 500 nodes and uh, including our applications in Zhejiang Industrial Cloud and the Suzhou Taihu Cloud. And for government clouds, the, C the CMP manages more than 1,500 nodes, but I cannot tell you like um, where they have been applied, sorry. Right, so that's enough for the IT cloud. So with the development of, uh, with the development of our network cloud, so in the last two years, uh, our CMP has actively participated in the uh, process of the network cloudification. So our entry point basically is using the CMP's Veeam as the NFV Veeam. So it is hierarchically deployed in a multi-level of core to edge, uh, core to region to edge locations and manage multiple VNFs and for our pilot projects in one of our province. So just a quick explanation of what uh, so what is the uh, layered decoupling test? So basically, we are using our CMP Veeam, uh, which is responsible for docking the hypervisors from different vendors and uh, providing aggregated API uh, northbound, uh, through the northbound API interface to systems like you know, the VNFMs and NFVOs. And we have passed, uh, so during the process, we have um, succe successfully uh, tested our C uh, CMP Veeam with more than 40 vendor combinations and passed the testing in more than 90, 90 different environments and with um, uh, six more VNFs, including VIM, uh, VIMS, the 5G core, the VBRAS, VCPE, VEPC, and V Firewall as well. And it has been deployed in production for VBRAS, VOBB, and VOTI, VIMS. So for 5G core, it's still a um, you know, experimental phase but we have already achieved some uh, progress in experimental environments. Well, this is, this is just a more detailed list of you know, which WNF has been tested in which location. So in our term, it's uh, which province. So the second part of today's presentation will be focused on uh, what, uh, what I just mentioned, our uh, the China Telecom's cloud uh, network uh, transformation. So there has been a new trend in the carrier network development, uh, which is the network codification and intelligent network transformation. So this can be achieved uh, through using the usage of the SDN, software defined network, and network cloud, open source, of course, and DevOps integration. So during that process, China Telecom released its own vision of the, how the network is gonna transform it's called the CTNet 2025. So it is our vision to achieve full cloud native, virtualized network, uh, large scale on demand services, and et cetera. So our transformation of China Telecom's network cloud includes three phases. So the phase one is, uh, is the infamous proprietary device phase. So where the apps have been independently deployed and uh, configured on top of the dedicated hardware so in this phase, like you know, the, our 
telco companies, we have very little control over the full stack. And the second phase, which is a virtualization phase, so in this case, the infrastructure consists of bare metal servers plus virtual machines and uh, the general hardware, and those are all running on the uh, VMs are running on the general hardware. And the service and the resource have been orchestrated and managed through the usage of both the user plan and control plan, and plus the storage plan VNFCs. So this is what uh, this is what we have already achieved in 2018, and. The third phase is our, uh, is our final goal here. It is called the, the full cloud native phase. So with the addition of containers as infrastructure, user plane and control plane, storage plane components can all be converted into like microservices, which are very hot topic uh, of the hour. So this way, the carriers will have the maximum control and ag agility over the uh, apps running on top. And uh, we have very little constraint from stuff like vendor locking. So in order to achieve our vision, so China Telecom has promoted the NFV applications and which helped our industrial, uh, with the help from our industrial partners. So we use the, so we, we use the ETS NFV as our reference architecture and uh, we, we've been working very closely with our, with our partners um, from the industrial uh, world like uh, Huawei, Ericsson's, and ZTE, and Huasan, and, and et cetera. So as I mentioned in the previous slide, we have completed the layer decoupling test with more than 40 different vendor combinations and uh, uh, we have a large scale test run in our production environment in one of our province. So this is where our entry point is. So as I mentioned before, so we are using the cloud managed platforms, VM, uh, VIM, VIM, Virtualized Infrastructure Manager as the uh, NFV VIM here. And during our test, we also, at China Telecom, we have also released 12 uh, enterprise level specifications and covering the scopes of uh, almost all the uh, in, in interfaces in the ETSI NFA architecture and uh, including NFAI and uh, MANO and uh, interface. So just to summarize a few key capabilities our um, CMP Vim has achieved in order to uh, in order to achieve our vision. And so there are, uh, there are four capabilities in total. Those are the NFA feature support, the unified northbound API, the Vim gateway enhancements in terms of the monitoring and alarm capabilities, and the integrating with the multi-vendor hypervisors and also the outside system. So breaking those down just here, yes. So in terms of the NFA features, our CMP Vim supports features like vCPU to pCPU, the NUMA Affinity Scheduling, huge page for RAM, DPDK, SRIOA Direct Pass-Through, Affinity and Anti-Affinity Deployment. And the Vim Gateway plays a huge part uh, in the Unified Management Module, so with the addition of the OpenStack Adaptation Layer, so it can provide the aggregated resource API from, uh, from the, uh, our resource pools in the different regions and uh, to the external systems such as FVO, VNFM, and many more. So this is a more detailed view inside the CMP Vim. So besides the just mentioned unified management module, there's our, um, there's our OpenStack adaptation layer. So this layer, we, we are using OpenStack to collect physical and virtual resource status and alarm information through the monitoring and alarm management module so it, so it triggers alarm according to the resource status analyze and writes down alarm notification to the interface gateway. And we also use, using, we also use the Zabbix for physical resource monitoring and the status collection and where the cinemeter, the OpenStack cinemeter is used for telemetry for, um, the, for the virtual resource uh, monitoring and uh, status collection correspondingly. So the last, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, it, but it's also a very important capability is the multi-vendor heterogeneous virtualization adaptation. So in order to manage the virtual, vir virtualized resource through the OpenStack adaptation layer, layer, there are two solutions we can adapt. Uh, the first is through, the, uh, through working with commercial, uh, commercial hypervisors. 
But in our use case, uh, we use vendors like VMware, Huawei, Huasan, and they all have their very own mature commercial virtualization products. And generally, there are, there are already a virtualization management module running on top of that. Um, so those modules are there are, are then responsible for providing the drivers to OpenStack to our OpenStack adaptation layer, and uh, the docking process is achieved through this method. So the second solution is to develop our own uh, hypervisor, which is based on KVM, and by using the strong coupling mode, uh, by using the KVM's strong co coupling mode, so the OpenStack adaptation layer can directly deploy. Agent, driver, agent drivers to the KVM kernel so and achieve the uh, direct management this way. And also, there are some other features should be taken into account. For example, uh, the, during our process, we have um, supported the, um, uh, we have done very extensive um, development of the uh, on top of the native OpenStack interface and uh, we have added functions like decentralized access, dynamic authorization, fault alarm and subscription notification, resource reservations, and et cetera, to our the CMP's Vim. So just a quick summary on, on, our, on, on the few things we have achieved in, the, in our telco network transformation. So the CMP Vim has been thoroughly tested with more than 40 decoupling vendor combinations and has, pa has passed testing in more than 90 different environments. So by the end of 2018, so it has already been deployed on our production environments with VNFs ranging from VBRAS, VOBB, and VOTI, VIMS. And we have already achieved um, successful deployments with uh, 5G core running on top of our clouds, but that's, uh, that's, but that's in the experiment phase still. So next up, I'm gonna introduce my colleague Chen Tian, and uh, she's gonna give you guys a bit more uh, inside view of our research and practice on the edge to edge to cloud coordination based on OpenStack and uh, StarnX. Uh, first, thank you, Hunda. <coughs> Thanks for excellent presentation. And also thank you for encouraging me to speak English. Okay, introduce myself. My name is Chen Tian. I come from China Telecom um, Intelligent Network and Terminal Research Institute in Guangzhou. Okay, first, let's see some background. First, the concept. Um, you know, our work on cloud computing becomes um, 20, 2011 or 2029 and before. Uh, in our opinion, cloud computing is naturally distributed and we call it the classic cloud. And under the promotion of new services and new technologies, uh, you know, the cloud is ex extending further to the age of the network and even to the user side, and we call, the a we call it the edge computing. And you know, and we say that edge computing is complement and co cooperative with the classic cloud. And we have studied many core technologies like for computing cloud and MEC, you know, um, where in exactly there, there is something different in the definition architecture or use case or, or the capabilities of those technologies, but exactly they are the same. They are all specific implementations of the concept of age and the, the te cloud technology. They are the convergence of, of, the, of the two. And by the way, the ITUT Y.3508 we laid this in standard have been re, have been published in 2019. And next, the use cases for carriers, we divide the service uh, mainly into three types: first, the video; second, IoT; and third, the cloud network. And the video, um, such as AR, VR, video monitoring, providing video process and the coordinated processing and analysis services to the customer. A second IoT for various industries, for example, transportation, manufacturing, agriculture, which will provide the capability of um, data collecting of massive 
device and also cooperative data processing, storage, and uh, um, analysis between the edge and the cloud. And, set, and the third, the cloud network. Um, you know, the network is the key capability of our carriers, and so is the cloud. They are the same. So, um, and the cloud network convergence is very important for carriers, which will provide some new solutions for traditional services and also new service experience for the customer in the new trends. Yeah. And now the dynamics. In, you know that, uh, in my opinion, the whole industry is falling in love with the concept of age plus cloud and intelligence. You now, uh, for the cloud providers, cloud service providers such as AWS, IoT plus clouds um, plus cloud is very important services, new services. And for the open source foundations, the more and the more new age project appeared, such as um, everyone, er, everybody knows the Acreno, Airship, Starling X, and also Cube Age, HX, IOFOG, um, IoT Age, and etc. Many, many. And for carriers, cl uh, network cloud. 5G and also white box is, are exactly the key capabilities and the key words. And on the right side, you can see the photo, well, the hype cycle of cloud computing 2019, the Gartner, um, the Gartner report that the distributed cloud is just on the rise and the, and the edge computing is on the peak. And also Gartner have listed the empowered edge and the distributed cloud on the top 10 uh, strategy technology trends of 2020. Okay, let's come to the China Telecom Distributed Cloud. Our cloud needs to support various service requirements. ICT, every uh, IT system, service platforms, network cloud, etc. And, and so this is our, our distributed cloud. Um, it's a large scale, large scale and hierarchical distribution well, which could be divided into four levels. From on the right, the group level core cloud, and the provincial level regional cloud, and also the edge convergence cloud on the city's level, and also the edge cloud on city's edge. Well, um, on the bottom is the main requirements for the edge. And everybody knows the massive, massively distributed nodes, and also heterogeneous genius solutions and requirements and also resource constraint, re, re, um, unreliable network connections, and also the age node need to need autonomy management capability and also unified management of the host resource and also need to support various age services, new services. And next one, we can the framework. This is a common um, cloudification framework, everybody knows, uh, including physical resource, virtual resource, and also the management components on the right side. Um, well, in this, we should mention that we add acceleration hardware and ac acceleration resource, and also both of hypervisor and container in this photo. Well, uh, all of these resources are configured on demand to various resources. Um, service requirements. Um, for example, the in the core cloud, um, the GPU of, of, of acceleration capabilities should be configured to provide um, the capability for uh, big data processing and also AI process AI training like this. And also on the edge, the M GPU and F or FPGA capability is configured for edge applications. Well, next, uh, our, what, our, what we focus is the management system. Well, this is the similar like the above mentioned by Honda. Yeah, one center and then four levels, but this photo contains more, level, more levels. Um, we use convergence layer to extend the management levels to age convergence and age. Yeah. And this convergence layer can also provide 
open standard interface for the outer systems, for example, uh, NVO and VNFM, so to increase the flexibility. Um, and also for the age, we should say that the age, we take many different kinds of flexible solutions. For example, the single single compute node, or the or the just the virtualization systems on the edge node, or lightware solutions. For example, multi vim, multi vim, multi az, and also we could in could use the integrated delivery systems. And, and what we choose for the integrated delivery system is the Starling X. We choose it as an, as an option of edge cloud co coordination management. Uh, everybody knows Starling X now have two release. The first release one for distributed cloud uh, containing one sub um, central cloud and also several of the sub-clouds. And also Starlink release two is containerized. And now um, because of the release two is not not um, good, yeah. So so we our work now is focused on the release one. And this is the architecture of our management system H cloud coordination management system based on Starling X. Now the three levels, the upper layer is the cloud, the China Telecom CMP Unified Management Center, and uh, in the middle is the edge cloud management platform containing, including a CMP Starling X adaptation layer and also Starling X Central, and on the bottom are the Starling X subclouds. And what we, what our work focus mainly on six points. The first one, the CMP Starling X adaptation layer. The second one, the keystone for unified authentication. And the third one is the AP, we add an API proxy in the Starling X central. And the fourth one, fourth and uh, the fifth and the sixth is on the CMP unified management center. Uh, let's see the detail. The first one, the Starlink adaptation layer. Uh, you know, because some um, specific encryption and authority management uh, requirements, we use the keystone and the glass components of our, our adaptation layer to replace the keystone and the glass components in the Starlink central. Yeah, so, so we converge so we use this solution to converge Starlink Central and author authorization system into our management system. And the second, the unified authentication. Well, in detail for the authentication, the keystone component in our adaptation layer uh, co cooperate with the DC manage component in the system controller to synchronize the tokens of the Starlink subclouds to the subcloud, and where the, the user of the subclouds could use those tokens to, um, to do some authentication operations. The third one, the API proxy, you know, uh, well, we add an API proxy, NGX reverse proxy in the Starlink central to unify receive the API requests of OpenStack services and the schedule the services to the co co corresponding StarlingX subcloud. And the fourth one, the unified VM gateway. As mentioned above, the VM gateway may Mapping and the handling and the filtering the OpenStack API services, yeah. So so we add some some add the information of Starling X handling and the filtering information into the Vim Gateway so that it so that the Vim Gateway could handle the API request request to of 
requests of the sub cloud, of the oversight on the sub cloud. And the fifth, the unified resource model, uh, where for Style X sub cloud, we treat the sub cloud uh, corresponding to the region of our unified resource model. Yeah, on the left is the resource model of our CMP where the subcloud is cor is corresponding to the region and the cluster to the cluster host to the cloud host so 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 by this through this we could manage the whole uh, resource of the subcloud by by our cmp and the six the unified portal uh, we add the capability of age resource management and some monitoring and alarming management capabilities into the portal of our CMP. Uh, so this slide shows the POC environment in our um, of our work, yeah, including six nodes. There are one for CMP and two for central, standard central, and three for subclouds based on Starling X um, version one, release one, yeah. And on in this environment, we deployed an um, age video processing application. And this application is, um, is developed by our colleague of other department, yeah. Um, this application is deployed in, in the architecture of Kub Kubernetes, well, Two nodes, one node now it uh, including the master node and also the worker node. Um, one one Starling X sub cloud is uh, support support the filtering and the engine of the age video processing, and the other node support the master node and and, and the other management app features on 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 it, yeah. And also, we are now cooperating with our MEC project team to support the MEC deployment. Now the work is ongoing, yeah. Um, okay, that's all what I want to say, thank you. Okay, any questions?呃，我就用那个中文说了啊，就是我想问一下，就是中国电信呃，关于在这个边缘云上，刚才我看到这个边缘云的一个架构，就是说呃，因为呃，电信做运营商嘛，你肯定有有有CT的云，有这个IT的
think I could handle that without the mic. It's going to be pretty short. Uh, uh, if you can say, obviously, what platform are you using for Mano for uh, network functions uh, management and orchestration? Right. So in terms of that question, so we have actually two vendors. The first one is the HP, and uh, the second one is developed by my colleague and his uh, and her uh, colleagues as well in the China Telecom's Guangzhou Research Institute. So we call that eMano. So basically, uh, two manufacturers. Any more questions? Um, yeah, and just uh, just in addition to the question to the gentleman back there, and in besides those two manufacturers, we still we have uh, some more uh, manufacturers for Mano, which are uh, which are. Provided by the uh, WNF manufacturers, because you know, usually they have a full stack of solution. Yep. Uh, so uh, I have another question about the uh, uh, evolve strategy for the CT core network. Uh, do you think the cloud native is the third, the third step uh, for the, uh, especially for the CT core network? Uh, uh, all the VNFs. I mean that CNF uh, is CNF uh, ne ne necessary for the CT operators in the core network, especially. Now, um, now our five, for example, our five G core VNFs are um, VMs, and. Uh, we deployed with the uh, Microsoft archi architecture VNFs from from the solution vendors, yeah. But but the trends uh, we we think is containerized. Yeah, the big trends can't be uh, stopped. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Okay, so the time is just past um, half past ten. So I guess um, thank you everyone for coming again. And uh, if you guys have any more questions, would like to share with us or discuss with us, you can always you know come come to us afterwards. Thank you. Thank you.